بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد if we look at the akhirat and the trials and tribulations which would follow then one would not sleep at night peacefully he said about Ahmad ibn Harb he used to say ya ajabal limay ya'lamu anna al-jannata tuzayyanu I am amazed at this human being that he knows that Jannah is being beautified above him. Your Jannah is being decorated, embellished above you. And Jahannam is being ignited and the fuel for Jahannam, the fire of Jahannam is being prepared. كَيْفَ يَنَامُ بَيْنَهُمَا how can you ever sleep? How can you ever be in the comfort zone when you know knowing very well that Jannat is above you being beautified and Jahannam below you being prepared? So one needs to prepare for Akhirat the movement, the walking, the talking of those people who have Akhirat in front of them are different. It is said about Sila bin Asham that his heels and his feet and his calves would become swollen due to the excessive standing in front of Allah in Salat. And uh, it has been written about him. وَبَلَغَ مِنَ الْإِجْتِهَادِ مَا لَوْ قِيلَ الْقِيَامَةُ غَدًا مَا وَجَدَ مَزِيدًا if it was told to him that tomorrow is Qiyamah, tomorrow you will die, prepare for it, then he would not change any action in his life. His daily routine and his daily pattern would not change one but Fala Yanamu and his daily routine was such that he wouldn't sleep at all. Wamata wahuwa sajidun and he passed away while he was in the condition of sajda. وَكَانَ يَقُولُ أَلَّهُمَّ إِنِّي أُحِبُّ لِقَاءَكَ فَأَحِبَّ لِقَاءِي O oh Allah, I long, I am avarous, I am desirous to meet you. Ya Allah, please also have love and anticipate my coming to you. So when a person has a connection with Allah and a connection with Akhirat, then the every day and the every night and the every moment is a moment of reflection and restlessness to increase this connection and this taluk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number three which Imam Ghazali was explaining, the batini, the hidden sifat. That a person should recognize the virtue of the night and he should have hope of the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because a person who realizes he has deficiency in akhirat will work more. Like a person in the worldly terms works on overtime and he gives more effort when he knows that there's a shortfall, he's got a debt to pay, he's got rent to pay, he's got different expenses to cover. So he takes a second job, he takes a third job, he does sideline business, he does extra things in his life. Why? Because he needs to cover the shortfall. And even the person who has all the wealth in the world does not stop working, although it will be sufficient for his generations, yet he is restless. If the people of dunya who are so restless of dunya, what has happened to the people of deen who are not restless for akhirat? So this shock for Jannat and this fear of Jahannam, a Sahabi Abu Raihana once returned from battle and he came home. And after the wife had prepared supper, he consumed the meal then he said, give me permission to read Salah. He made wudu. 
Then he got ready for salat. فقرأ سورة ثم أخرى فلم يزل ذلك. He read a surah and then another surah and then another surah. حتى إذا أذن المؤذن أن تلد المؤذن gave the adhan. The muadhin gave the adhan. So he got ready to go to the masjid. Can you imagine? He was ready performing salat. His wife next to him on the bed. And a person who comes from a long journey, from a long distance, and we cannot imagine and perceive the hardships and the difficulties which Sahaba had undergone in their journeys in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the wife says, Ya Aba Rayhana, Kad Ghazawta, Fata'ibta, that mashallah, you went out in the path of Allah, Allah gave you an opportunity, and you are back now, you must be very tired, you must be very exhausted, you've returned now. What wasdom and hikmah she said, Alam yakun li minka hadh. What about my shaykh? Ta'ibta. You tired yourself. You exhausted yourself, oh my beloved husband. You needed to rest. And you and I, I haven't seen you for a long time. So he replied, Bala wallah. He said, by the oath of Allah, you have a right over me, and if I remembered you, I would have spent every moment with you. So she says, فَمَا الَّذِي شَغَلَكَ يَا أَبَا رَيْحَانَ So what made you so engrossed? So he said, لَمْ يَزَلْ I continued reading the ayat of the Quran. It engrossed my heart. مَا وَصَفَ اللَّهُ فِي جَنَّتِهِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the bounties and the pleasures of Jannah, I had complete amnesia. I had complete amnesia. I forgot about dunya. I even forgot about you. The wife that is returning and the husband has so much shock to meet this wife, he forgets his wife. Imagine. Number four, a person should look at whom he is standing before. And every word that he is saying, he is speaking to Allah. And that he is secluded with Allah. And if a person thinks if somebody has beauty, then we get enticed by their beauty. Likewise, if they've got good character, good habits, we are enticed by that. Or number three, somebody gives us gifts, then we are enticed by that. So likewise, Allah is the greatest. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Ajmal. Allah is the most beautiful creation on earth. Allah is the most exalted. Allah is the one being that has given us the most. So if a person hears this in front of him, then he will stand before Allah knowing that my and Allah is in front of me. So the Alma explained that if a person is not seeing Allah and he is not hearing Allah, then how can a person get this ecstasy? So the Alma have explained, Imam Ghazali has given an explanation that if your beloved is behind a curtain in a dark room, but you are speaking to them and you know that they are listening to you, then how will you speak? And what ecstasy and enjoyment would one get when he knows that person is behind the curtain? Likewise, we are speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On a chat or WhatsApp, when you send a message and it shows the delivered sign, you send an email, you know the person received it, it didn't bounce. Everything that we are saying and we are speaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more aware of that. So a person who knows the value of Allah will not miss out 
on the opportunity to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all. Actually, the night will be too short. So some Mashai have said, فَإِنَّ اللَّيْلْ يَزُورُنِي قَائِمًا It's as if the night has come and when the visitor comes and you just greet them and they are standing before you even tell them, come sit down, يَنْصَرِفُ قَبْلَ and Ajlis, before even you can sit down and start the discussion, they need to leave. Ali ibn Bakkar used to say that منذ أربعين سنة ما أهزنني شيء سوى طلوء الفجر That for 40 years I was grieved about the coming of Fajr. Meaning that when I am informed and I know that the night is over, that thing, that information, there's no worse news on earth, worse than the coming of Fajr and the ending of the night. Fudail bin Ayaz used to say, إِذَا غَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسْ فَرِحْتُ بِالظَّلَامِ لِخَلْوَتِي بِرَبِّي When the sun sets, there's no more ecstasy and pleasure I can get with the darkness because it's only me and my Allah. It is only me and my Allah. وَإِذَا طَلَعَتِ الشَّمْسُ حَزِنْتُ لِدُخُولِ النَّاسِ عَلَيَّ Then when the sun rises, I grieve. And I have remorse that I was speaking to the Creator. Now I'll have to leave the company of the Creator and spend time with the creation. Abu Sulaiman al Darani used to say, Ahlul Layli fi Laylihim. The people of the night, and in their nights, Alad min Ahlil Lahwi fi Lahwihim. They get more pleasure, they get more ecstasy, they get more enjoyment in their nights than the people of negligence get in their disobedience and their sinning. If it was not for the beauty and the enjoyment of the nights, I would have wished that death come to me. I would have wished death come to me. لو عوض الله سبحانه وتعالى أهل الليل من ثواب أعمالهم If Allah had to replace the rewards of whatever good is we doing with the pleasure and the joy enjoyment of the night then just standing before Allah and enjoying the company of Allah I would have rather preferred that than all the rewards Allah had promised for standing up in front, in the darkness of the night in front of Allah. The ulama used to say, لَيْسَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَقْتْ يُشْبِهُ نَعِيمَ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ That if we are to look at all the bounties that Allah would give in Jannah, then there is no bounty more greater and close to the bounties of Jannah than the satisfaction and the gratification that people get fi kulubihim bilayli in their hearts in the darkness of the night min halawatil munajat when a person speaks to Allah laysat min dunya إِنَّمَا هِيَ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ That in this dunya, the pleasure of speaking to Allah, there can be no comparison in the world. It's as if you are in Jannah. Allah has given the special gift to His friends and there is no other pleasure in dunya more better than the pleasure of speaking to Allah in Tahajjud. Muhammad ibn Munkadir used to say, Ma baqiya min laddhati dunya illa thalath. If there was any enjoyment you would get, then it's only in three things. There can be no pleasure like Qiyamul Layl 
I no pleasure in spending time with the friends of Allah. I no pleasure than pleasure standing in front of Allah in salat in the masjid with jama'ah. The Arifin used to say, Inna Allah yanduru bil ashar ila quliyu bil mutayyikidin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the hearts of those who are awake at the time of tawhajjud فَيَمْلَأُهَا أَنْوَارًا And like a container that is empty and you need to fill water the hearts of the friends of Allah Allah fills it up with nur Allah fills their hearts with nur So this is a chance where we can draw from the nur of Allah and not draw from the ma'asiyat and the disobedience of Allah. A person can pass the night in watching television, in spending the time in watching YouTube, in chatting, in going to different platforms, in different worlds, in different avenues of ma'asiyat, and they can go centuries and billions of kilometers away from Allah or it's an opportunity to tread the path to get close proximately to Allah some ulama have said that inna li ibadin min ibadi Allah says there are some servants that love me and I love them they seek me and they look for me and I have ambition for them to meet me they remember me and I remember them as if I am seeing them and they see me. If you tread their path, then you will come close to me. So it was asked, what are the signs of these people? They are the people who look at the time in the day to see how they can use their day properly and how at night they look at the time to see how they can khala kullu habibim bi habibihi every lover now secludes himself with his beloved nasabu li aqdamahum and they stand up in salat and they spend their nights in salat and they spend their nights in tahajjud crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking Allah thus was the nights of the ummah and these were the days of the ummah that they were on the musalla at night and on the horseback in the day seeing how the deen of Allah can come alive Malik bin Dinar used to say that إِذَا قَوْمَ الْأَبْدِ يَتَهَجَّدْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ when a servant stands before Allah in the darkness of the night, prostrating to Allah, making tilawat of Quran, then qarrab minhu al-jabbar. Allah Jalla Jalaluhu comes close to him. And the pleasure and the ecstasy and the anwarat which a person gets in thus close proximity is incomparable it cannot be fathomed and he is to Imam Ghazali says thus was the special secret of the Salihin and the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was on these moments where the Mashaykh used to encourage their murids to spend their nights in the min al-layli sa'ah there is a moment where when you make a dua, your dua is accepted. And these are nights, whether it is specific nights and Mubarak nights, or it is specific opportunities and chances where it is Ramadan, we should not lose these opportunities. The amal for today is to spend on the creation of Allah, to help the creation of Allah. Inna lillahi aqwaman. There is a special group of people where Allah showers wealth so that they can benefit mankind. As long as they spend on their wealth, Allah gives them more. But the day they stop spending, Allah snatches that wealth 
and gives it to somebody else. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.